Crossovers are an integral part of every loudspeaker. But are you sure you know what they are exactly? Let's discuss. I'm Elon Osborne, and this is Acoustically Speaking. Although speakers are critical components in any audio system, many consumers take them for granted. After all, aren't they just boxes where someone has thrown in two or three speaker drivers and they just work? That might be the case if you bought them from Jimmy in the Walmart parking lot, but if you want speakers that actually sound good, you need something that not only looks good on the outside, but is well engineered on the inside. For speakers that include a tweeter, mid-range driver, and woofer, a crossover is an integral component of the speaker so that the woofer, mid-range, and tweeter reproduce the frequencies that they are optimized for. The term crossover has two meanings in audio. A point where certain frequencies are divided or filtered so that they are sent to the speaker driver or drivers best designed to reproduce the directed frequencies and or the physical circuit that actually divides or filters the frequencies. Crossovers incorporate three types of filters, high pass filter or HPF, where the frequencies above a designated crossover point are passed through, a low pass filter or LPF, where the frequencies below a designated crossover point are passed through, and a band pass filter or BPF. This filter discards frequencies above and below specific points and only passes a band of frequencies in between those points. That's typical with your mid-range driver. What is a cutoff frequency? This is the point where the HPF, LPF, and BPF frequency point begins. It is important that this point is accurately placed in relation to a speaker driver's frequency range capabilities. A slope is the rate of frequency drop-off associated with the cutoff frequency. The drop-off can be steep or gradual. The reason that slope is important is that sound needs to blend well so that there isn't a noticeable abrupt switch between speaker drivers. In addition, most slopes can be adjusted in increments of six decibels, where a six decibel slope would be a very gradual slope, reducing in volume over a long span of frequencies. On the contrary, a 48 decibel slope is almost straight down, very steep. Even though there may be two or three speaker drivers assigned to handle specific frequency ranges, the transition between them should be unnoticeable to the listener. This means that there is a narrow frequency range overlap between the speaker drivers where they are reproducing the same frequencies as the crossover hands over the designated frequencies from one speaker driver to another within a speaker assembly. This is also important when matching an external subwoofer with the rest of the speakers in a system. To perform the filtering task, there are two types of crossover circuits. A passive crossover is a combination of resistors, capacitors, and inductors that are all set to divide frequencies at a specific point. No power source is required since they are typically found in passive speakers. An active crossover uses a DSP, or Digital Signal Processing Chip, or microprocessor, to divide frequencies. A digital crossover accepts a full range signal and then splits it into the low, mid, and high frequencies using its DSP function. In addition, an active slash digital crossover may include adjustability. This option, however, is mainly included in powered speakers, subwoofers, and AV receivers. As such, active crossovers require power to work. The crossover settings in an AV receiver are often referred to as base management settings. Adjustable crossover slash base management settings in subwoofers and AV receivers allow for more precise crossover points when using subwoofers and speakers with different frequency range profiles in home theater audio system. A two-way speaker incorporates a woofer and a tweeter. A three-way speaker incorporates a woofer, mid-range driver, and tweeter. In a two-way speaker, the crossover is set at a specific frequency point. Any frequencies above that point are sent to the tweeter, while the remainder are sent to the woofer. In a three-way speaker, a crossover can be designed so that it has two frequency points, one for the point between the woofer and the mid-range, and another for a point between the mid-range and the tweeter. For example, a two-way crossover point might be two kilohertz. This means that frequencies above two kilohertz are directed to the tweeter, while frequencies below two kilohertz are directed to the woofer. In a three-way speaker, there might be a 200 hertz point between the woofer and the mid-range, and then say a three kilohertz point between the mid-range and the tweeter. So everything we've covered so far illustrates the basic function and construction of crossovers, but many speaker makers add their own twists in the materials, 
number of components in the crossover and for electronic crossovers, DSP and adjustment range, etc. Some might even argue that the components which make up the crossover are the most important feature in your more expensive audiophile grade speakers. Please weigh in with your thoughts on this in the comment section below. And with that, this episode of Acoustically Speaking comes to a close. Are you more familiar with what a crossover does? And why expensive speakers do have a higher price tag, not just because of the materials they use on the outside? Let's start a conversation on crossovers, shall we? As always, to keep up on all things hi-fi, home theater, gadgets, wearables, and tech, don't forget to bookmark acoustics.com to stay in the know. And remember, six decibel slope, gradual. 48 decibel slope, steep. Until next time.